think it's working. Hi, this is Dick, Konacek Moran, and Mike Reese, and they are working in the Million Orchid Lab at Fairchild uh, right Tropical. Right now, it's only the 179,452 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're getting there, yes. And well, I thought we'd go to 999,999, but we did, but we've had a few weeject jobs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we've slipped back a bit. Oh, well. So what are you doing, uh, Dick Konacek, Moran? Right now I'm, I'm making medium for our jars in which we will grow uh, the orchids. And the idea is to let it be get just before it starts to boil and then transfer it to these jars. And what are you going to do with those? And putting them in the autoclave to sterilize them because everything has to be sterile. Okay. Even Mike and, and uh, Andrew and I are all sterile. <laughs> yeah, we right? Know. We all know. <laughs> How about Andrew? <laughs> I'm going to move over here, my dear. Okay. All right. I'm using the Andrew Reeve method instead of the uh, pipette, which is using the uh, ladle. Uh huh. And you said there was a, a magnet in the bottom. Mm hmm. Magnet in the bottom of that to do something. That's, yeah. That's Andrew, by the way. Andrew Reeve. Right. He's way in back. And so you're going to ladle that medium out. And what's Andrew doing? We're sending this to some high school kids out in uh, Illinois, right? From Indiana. Indiana. Uh oh. There, uh, I screwed it up. You have a lot of snow there? I don't know. So, what yeah, are you doing, really Andrew? Uh, I was just labeling the bottle of orchids and. Uh, so. I just transplanted those into a new bottle of fresh medium. And what kind of orchids are those? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what species they are, but they're labeled B1. Oh. <laughs> That's the best I can well, do. We do. We do know that native orchids. Yeah, they're, they're native all, orchids. They're all natives. Right, yeah. Okay, let's go see what Mike is doing. Uh, working there. We're working under the laminar flow hood, which keeps bad bugs in the air from in getting into our jars. And here are some orchids that have been growing for a couple of months, maybe, on this nutrient medium. That's the, what Dick was making, huh? Yeah, he was making it up and we put it into the jars, and when they sit on that, they grow their roots into it, and they um, have a good time, uh -huh. and they um, and they um, live in those. Um, they keep under lights for 12 hours a day, um, so they grow during the day, and they take a rest at night time, which they want to. And after a while, they they're growing, they're using up the nutrients, fertilizer, and so we transplant them into a new bottle, which has new nutrients or fertilizer in the what amounts to the soil they're going to grow in the black uh -huh. stuff at the bottom, right. agar or agar. Right. I can't remember which is English way anymore. <laughs> to say it. Or the American way. Fifteen ways to say it. Uh, probably not. So we're just setting them in there and trying not to transfer or have any infections that might be in the atmosphere. So that's why we're doing it under the hood. Uh -huh. The air is clean and it's kept clean by push, passing it through filters. And you have to do all this transplanting by tweezers, huh? Wow. Well, it's hard to do it any other way, really. Yeah. You can't get your fingers in there, really. Yes, right. As, as, as Dick says, um, this is going to be good training for when we grow old and in our retirement years we build ships in bottles. <laughs> yeah. You know, they do building ships in bottles when we grow up or grow old and this is how we how they do ships in bottles. They build the ships and they put them in there with the mast of the sailing ship folded down. 
and when they get them in the bottle, they pull a little string which raises the mast inside the bottle. Great. Wow. I'm sure everybody wants to know if they don't already. So these um, orchids are destined for... These orchids, um, then the next stage, when they grow big enough that um, they're literally filling the bottle, and you can see some, I think they've got a bottle outside the lab to show people, but they're pretty well grown. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they are taken out and laid on sheets of burlap, because orchids, when they get bigger, they don't really have roots that grow in the ground, um, most of them anyway. You know, they just sit on trees, um, on, the, on the barks of trees or anything, really, and they just get the get nutrients out of the rainwater to grow. And um, so we take them out, we put them on burlap, and they start There's to grow bigger. That are, that are really, really big. They're yeah. about ready to go to the burlap. To the burlap, uh-huh. And when they've grown nicely on the burlap, then they get taken and put in trees. Now, this project has only begun at the beginning of this year, in January, so we haven't grown any to the point where they're big enough to actually take them outside and put them in nature in, on trees. But that's, they say, that should happen maybe in, in the spring. Okay. Some of the ones that we've grown on, got on burlap now, will be big enough to get out into the wild. Okay. The urban wild, of course. The urban wild, right. And yeah. this will be in, in Miami, in, yeah. in neighborhoods in Miami. And yeah. yeah, specifically in Coral Gables. In Coral Gables. Right now we are in Coral Gables, and um, Coral Gables um, City Council is considering making a grant of money to help this project. Ah. And I suppose beautify yeah. The city of Goral Gables, which even now is called the City Beautiful, so uh -huh, yeah. we're going to make it even more more beautiful. beautiful. Yes, yeah. well, we get you. the native orchids back where they belong because over the years, over the previous century, people just picked the orchids that were growing in the trees and took them and sold them. Right. That's so why there are no orchids in the trees anymore. Yeah. Great. Okay. Let's make a swing around so you can see the lab. There's Andrew again. And Dick carefully watching the medium. And maybe I'll just go outside and see if I can find some orchids on burlap. Press this is the whole. Is on They're at the nursery, there. I think. They're at the nursery? Not, well, not right outside I'm here? I, I you can see all know. of the bottles that that. that uh, these guys have done, a couple of other volunteers have done. So it's a big project. That's why it's called a Million Orchid Project. Yeah, I think there's some outside. Maybe I'll go out and see if they can tell me about this. So they actually had, well, this is just in a, uh, one of the seed pods from one of the native orchids, which is a cigar orchid. It has millions of seeds inside of it. And what they do is they sprinkle these little seeds onto this agar that has all the nutrients that they need. It has uh, sugar, salt, protein, charcoal. And what they do is, first they have one initial bottle. And once hundreds of little orchids start growing, they start thinning, thinning it out after they start to uh, fill up the bottle like we see here. This may be thinned out one more time. But at the end, one bottle, initial bottle of seedlings, of uh, seeds that were sprayed onto it, they'll actually get Possibly 200 bottles at the end. So quite a few seeds. Oh, I mean, to populate the whole city of Miami. Yeah, they need a lot. So Coral Gable will be getting out things, uh, local schools as well, and other institutions that may be a part of this. <laughs> Those are the seeds? In there? Yes, this is just right over here. There could be millions of seeds inside of one seed pod. <laughs> We're making this video, uh, we've been in the lab there, we're making this video for a class of students in Indiana. Oh, So we oh just, got an, <laughs> just got a... Uh, <laughs> I'm very oh. colorful. <laughs> just got the rundown, yeah. Oh my so, gosh. Okay, okay, thank I you. I it's Indiana. 